In this video, I'm going to introduce the topic of enthalpy. So you can see on the board there, we've got the title enthalpy and I've written down a capital H and that's because the symbol for enthalpy is H. So what is enthalpy? Well, enthalpy is defined as the heat energy stored in a chemical system. So you could think of that as the chemical potential energy that is stored in the reactants of a chemical reaction. We can, however, measure the energy that's absorbed or released into the surroundings. So when you have a chemical reaction, energy is either taken into the chemical system or energy is released from the chemical system into the surroundings and we would normally experience that as heat. So we can't measure enthalpy directly but we can measure the enthalpy change and this is denoted by the symbol delta H. So the enthalpy change of a chemical reaction is defined as the enthalpy of the products minus the enthalpy of the reactants. So if we represent the enthalpy change in a typical chemical reaction, we can draw something like this, which is known as an enthalpy profile diagram. So you can see I've got an enthalpy axis and the x-axis is known as the progress of reaction axis. So all chemical reactions involve reactants at the start. So in this diagram, I've put the reactants as having a higher enthalpy content than the products. Remember, enthalpy is the heat content stored by the chemical system. So the system here would be the reactants. And when they make their products, the products don't actually have as much heat energy stored in them. And so the enthalpy change would be represented by this downward arrow. So this here shows the enthalpy change of this particular reaction. So how would that be experienced by us? Well, if the products only contain this amount of heat energy, but the reactant started out with more heat energy, then obviously that heat has to go somewhere. So where does it go? It goes into the surroundings. And so the surroundings gain heat energy and basically they get hotter. So this is obviously what we call an exothermic reaction. But what's important now is that we know the sign of the enthalpy change. So the enthalpy has decreased. We started with a high enthalpy. We've gone to a lower enthalpy. And so the enthalpy change is negative because enthalpy has been lost. Heat energy has been lost to the surroundings. So exothermic reactions have a negative delta H. So if we look at the opposite scenario now, whereby the reactants have a lower enthalpy content than the products. So obviously the delta H would be represented by an upwards arrow now. So effectively, for these reactants to be turned into these products, they've had to steal energy from the surroundings. And so the surroundings have actually lost heat energy, and so the surroundings would feel cold as a result. So we're obviously talking about the opposite to exothermic reactions, and of course that's endothermic reactions. So endothermic reactions take heat from the surroundings in order for the reaction to proceed. The surroundings feel colder as a result, 
But again, the important thing to know is the sign of the enthalpy change. Well, you can see from the diagram, the enthalpy started low, it's got higher, and so endothermic reactions have a positive delta H. So we're going to look at a very common chemical reaction, one that probably most of us use every day, and that is the reaction between methane, CH4, and oxygen. So you would typically use this at home if you were lighting a gas boiler, a gas powered boiler, or if you were using methane to heat up your food on the, the hob in the kitchen. So here's my source of methane. It's obviously the gas from the gas cooker. And I'm just gonna release some methane into the oxygen in the kitchen. You can hear it there. It's not reacting. So what's going on? Why is this not reacting? Of course, to make the gas light, we have to give it a spark. So it's normally in the form of pushing the button down and there it is, it's on. So what's the need for pro providing the spark? We'll go back to the enthalpy profile diagram now and see if we can explain that. So the reason why the methane wouldn't spontaneously react with the oxygen was because we had to overcome an energy barrier for the reaction to start. So this is represented on a diagram like this green arrow here, and we call this energy barrier the activation energy. So there it is labelled up there, and you can see I've given it the abbreviation, the capital E subscript A. So that represents activation energy, and essentially what the activation energy barrier is for is to break the bonds between the atoms in the reactants. Once that's been carried out, the reaction can proceed and it sort of um, fuels itself from then on, once that energy barrier has been overcome. Similarly, if you have a match, obviously the match won't light spontaneously. It's not reacting with the oxygen in the air. We have to strike it first to overcome the activation energy barrier and then the combustion takes place spontaneously. The enthalpy change would still be represented in the same way. So we have this downward arrow from the reactants. So the reactants have got a higher enthalpy content than the products. And so the chemical system has lost enthalpy and the enthalpy has gone into the surroundings. So this is an exothermic reaction with a negative delta H. We'll just finish off with an enthalpy profile diagram showing the activation energy for an endothermic reaction. So remember, endothermic reactions, the reactants have a lower enthalpy content than the products. And to turn the reactants into products, we still have to overcome an, an energy barrier. So it rises like that and then goes down to the products line. The activation energy now would be all the way from here, all the way to the top there. So that would be the activation energy. And the enthalpy change, remember for endothermic reactions is positive. So it's an upwards arrow from the two enthalpy lines. And there's the delta H on the diagram there. 